Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to customize 3GS materials, or in other words, I'm going to show you how you can inject your own shares into 3GS shares. Now, I'm also going to be covering how to add your uniforms and defines into 3GS materials. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see here, I have this rotating icosahedron here. And if we look into the code, I have this very simple setup here. Uh, I create the icosahedron geometry and I create the material. And then we create a mesh from it and we add that to the scene. Very simple stuff. Now, as you can see, I'm using the mesh standard material here. And with a bit of lighting, we get this look, which is pretty nice. Now, if you create a share from scratch using the share material class, you will get this red icosphere. And in many projects, you might want to create your own shaders from scratch. Uh, but what if you want to use the 3GS code that already exists and just add your own shader into it? So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So let's use the mesh standard material here again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this code. And what we'll get is we'll get this icosphere, which is white. Now here we can use a function that 3GS provides called on before compile. And what this allows us to do is that it allows us to run our code before compiling the shares. So here we get a parameter called shader and we provide a function like this. Now let's console log share here. Now if I open up my console, you can see we get this object which has this vertex shader, uh, which is a string. And it will give us this fragment shader also, which is a string. So let's console.log shader.fragment shader. And as you can see here, we get this string. Now, uh, if you look into the shader code, you can see mostly this shader is including other files into it. So we're going to replace a part of this shader with our shader code. Now, um, I'm going to pick the color fragment here. Uh, so let's just copy that and here I'm going to do shader dot fragment shader equals shader dot fragment shader dot replace, which is a JavaScript function for replacing strings. And I'm going to paste this in. And again, I'm going to create a new string uh, that this is going to be replacing. Uh, and I'm going to paste that again and I'm going to inject my own code here. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to set the diffuse color to a yellow color. And just bear with me for a second. Uh, we're going to get into where this diffuse variable came from. Uh, so we're going to do 1, 1, 0, 1, which is the alpha. And also, let's put this code right here uh, so we can see what's happening. And there we go. We successfully injected our own shader code into the mesh standard material. Now, if I take a look at this shader code now, uh, if we scroll up, to the part that we replaced our code, you can see here that we have the include color fragment. And this is now the injected part uh, that we used. Now you might be wondering where did this diffuse color variable came from? And what's the code behind this color fragment shader? And these questions are crucial because you want to be understanding what's going on with your shader. So here I'm going to hop back into VS code and let's open up the file explorer. Let's close this. Let's open node modules. And let's scroll down to find three. There we go. Open that up and then open up SRC, go into renderers and shaders. And here in the shaders folder, we get this very interesting file that is called shaderchunk.js. So let's open that up. Um, let's close this. And in this file, I'm going to search for color fragment. So if I search for color, you can uh, see that we have a color fragment code imported uh, from another JS file. So if we open that up, uh, you can see here that we have this share code. And um, if we look at the name here, uh, this is colorfragment.jlsl.js. So this is a JS file, but as you can see here, I'm getting syntax highlighting for JLSL. That's because I'm using an extension called JLSL literal, uh, which you can download and install in VS code. And this gives you syntax highlighting uh, if you put a JLSL comma like this before the string. So let's do that here. Uh, I'm going to type in JLSL, select it, and Shift-Alt-A comments this code. So again, type in JLSL, select it, Shift-Alt-A comments this code, and we get syntax highlighting uh, within VS Code. Now, uh, let's close this and let's go back into colorfragment.jlsl. So as you can see here, this shader code is modifying this variable that is called the diffuse color. 
um, and that's how we know we need to use this diffuse color variable. Now, if you ever wanted to modify other parts of 3GS materials, uh, you can come to this file, shaderchunk.js, and pretty much all of 3GS material shaders are within this file. So I can come here and look at displacement vertex um, and see what I need to modify in order to see how I can customize 3GS materials. So now let's see how we can add our own uniforms into 3GS shaders. Now, the simple rule here is if we go into uh, the share code that we have, when you want to add a uniform, look for a parsing uh, include. So as you can see here at the top of this string, um, all of the shaders pretty much are using the parse keyword. Um, so we're going to look through these and we're going to pick the color parse fragment. So let's copy that. And again, let's repeat the same process as we did before. And here we're going to add a very simple uniform. So we're going to do uniform float u time. We're going to come down here and do sign of u time. Now we need to actually define this uniform uh, within 3JS2. Uh, and if we console.log the material um, dot uniforms, and if we remove this, um, it doesn't work the same way as it would work with the shader material. Uh, so you can see we get undefined here. But what we can do here is we can cut this and we can come here and paste this in. And instead of material.uniforms, we're going to do shader.uniforms. And we get an object here. Now we're going to use this object so we can do shader.uniforms.utime. We're going to create a new object here with the value of zero at the beginning. Now, um, this is all fine, but we need to update this U time in our animation loop. So what we can do here is we can store this share object um, in the material uh, object and we can um, reference it later. So let's do material dot user data dot share equals share. And here we store a reference of the share um, in the user data that is in the material. Now we can go into our animation loop, uh, which is at the bottom of the file here. And as you can see, my animation code uh, for the icosphere is here. And here I'm gonna do material dot user data dot share dot uniforms dot u time dot value equals the timestamp uh, that I have. You can use three just clock for this. Um, I'm using the timestamp that is uh, created by this use tick hook. Uh, in my template. The link is of course in the description. Now if we take a look, we get our beautiful animation with the help of uniforms. Now let's see how we can add defines uh, because defines are useful too. But now for the defines, we can actually use the material object here. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna add material uh, dot defines. You can see this is a valid object within material. And I'm gonna add a no animation property, uh, set it to true. And if we go into here, uh, let's create a new variable called green value. Now here we're going to use the no animation define to uh, see if we want to have an animation for the green value or not. Now that's it. If we reload the page, we can see we get no animations here. Now if I come here and set this to false, we get our animation back. And that's it for this video. If you learned anything in this video, please like the video because that helps the channel a ton. And subscribe to my channel if you're interested in 3GS or in 3D graphics in general. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.